My name is Alex Dimitri, and I'm the founder of Menlo Park Psychiatry and Sleep Medicine. I'm double boarded in psychiatry and sleep medicine, and today we're going to be talking about sleep apnea. Apnea in Latin means a cessation of breathing, and sleep apnea is when people have pauses or cessation of breathing during the night in their sleep. The most common things we hear in people with sleep apnea is their partner will say that they, they were snoring very loudly at night. But not everybody that snores has sleep apnea, and not everybody that has sleep apnea snores. More commonly, people will say they wake up a lot of times during the night to roll over or change sides on the bed. But people will also often say that they wake up often to use the bathroom during the night. And some people will think that they have prostate issues or, or they drank too much water. But the reality is that their sleep is not deep. Broken, unrefreshing sleep results in significant daytime fatigue and in some cases sleepiness. Some of us will compensate by drinking large amounts of caffeine to not have those symptoms. Other symptoms of sleep apnea include elevated blood pressure, increased anxiety, for some people increased impulsivity, which can also result in symptoms that might look like ADHD. People that don't have regular solid sleep will often report significant problems with memory during the day, trouble with attention and focus, and also trouble remembering things in general. Beyond the mental effects of sleep apnea, Broken up sleep also results in significant biological effects. A lot of times people will experience weight gain and increased carbohydrate craving because that's what the body does when it's tired during the day. Usually the first person to notice it is your bed partner. Bed partners will often notice that someone is having episodes of not breathing during the night or loud snoring during the night. Beyond your bed partner at home, we'll often encourage our patients to use apps which may be able to record audio during the night. People will often listen to recordings of themselves at night and be able to tell if they have pauses in breathing or loud, very labored breathing. Being aware that you wake up numerous times during the night can often be suggestive of sleep apnea. Once somebody does suspect they have sleep apnea, the best initial step is to get in touch with either your primary care physician or a sleep specialist. Once a referral has been made for a sleep study, there's two types of sleep studies that can be made. There's one that's at home, and there's one that you can do in the lab. They're both called polysomnography. The home sleep test is usually the easiest and most unobtrusive. People take home a device that looks about the size of a smartphone, and the device during the night will monitor airflow through their nose, how their pulse oximetry, blood oxygen levels are during the night, and it'll also track how their chest is moving during the night. The test is pretty painless and straightforward, and you'll often bring it back to the sleep lab or your sleep doctor and have that recording analyzed and determine if you have sleep apnea. In-lab testing is a little bit more advanced and it involves sleeping over or spending the night in a sleep lab. The main difference between a home sleep test and an in-lab sleep study is that during the in-lab sleep study, they'll also track brain wave activity in addition to leg movements and muscle tone in other parts of the body. Oftentimes these studies are a bit more comprehensive, but they're also more onerous in that not many people like sleeping in a lab. Sleep apnea is really a problem of airflow, so it's important to recognize all the different parts of the airflow where it could get interrupted. The most common form of treatment for sleep apnea is CPAP. CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure. And it's important to note that CPAP machines don't really deliver oxygen, they're actually delivering room air. They're very quiet and minimalist these days, and the masks have actually gotten quite small themselves. This is one example of a nasal pillow mask, which actually fits over the head like this, and will actually enable you to breathe during the night using a CPAP. A lot of people choose to use this kind of mask, but there's other kind of masks as well. In the end, people will often report sleeping better through the night, having better energy during the day, and fewer awakenings while they sleep. People with sleep apnea sometimes will have really congested noses and they'll be mouth breathing during the day. So having allergies corrected and having a, being able to breathe well through your nose during the night can be the beginning of treating sleep apnea. The tongue and throat are other areas that can often be involved in sleep apnea. Some people have a really small jaw and they'll often say that they've had teeth extracted as children or their teeth will be really crowded and they'll have had braces at some point in their lives. Having a small jaw results in the tongue sitting further back in the throat, and that in turn can also obstruct the airway. People will also have large neck sizes, and having a large neck size or being overweight can also result in significant sleep apnea. That's why some of the best treatments for sleep apnea involve actually lifestyle modification and weight loss. We should also be mindful that certain substances can make the airways a little more floppy and prone to sleep apnea. Alcohol or other sedating medications can increase sleep apnea and this is something also worth looking into and reducing before bed at night. 
Positional therapy can also be used to improve sleep apnea. For some people, sleeping on the back can result in significantly worse sleep apnea. Other people may choose to sleep on an incline or find that they sleep better on an incline or in an airplane seat. One other form of treatment for sleep apnea is a mandibular advancement device. It's important to note that this is actually quite different than a typical night guard or mouth guard in the sense that in addition to protecting the teeth, it also works to move the lower jaw forward. Moving the lower jaw forward actually results in the tongue moving forward as well, and when the tongue is more forward in the mouth, it's less likely to fall back into the airway.